Teresa. Woo! That was nice. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Good morning, everyone. It's another beautiful day outside. Aren't we so blessed? Yes, we are. We'd like to welcome all of you here today to the First United Methodist Church. My name is Donna Boardman. I'm the lay leader of this congregation. And Pastor Paul Copeland is our minister, and he will be leading our service today. I'd like to uh, invite all of our visitors to uh, come down for refreshments after we have our worship completed. And we'll have cookies and punch and coffee and all kinds of today, cake? cake oh my goodness we have cake too Woo <laughs> so if you have a sweet tooth and you're hungry or even if you're not please come down and visit with us we'd love to have you and for those of you who are at home we invite you to come and, and visit us at worship we have worship here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and also on Saturday evenings at 530 in the chapel we'd love to have you come and be with us because uh, God is good and all the time. God is good. Amen. I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you this morning. Teresa Yarger will be celebrating, that's Teresa back here on the organ, she'll be celebrating 11 years as our church organist. And so this afternoon she's going to be presenting an organ recital today, right here in the sanctuary, at 3 p.m. So we hope that you'll be able to come and enjoy that. I'm sure it will be absolutely wonderful. Uh, Paul, Pastor Paul and Rita Ellsworth will be going to the nursing homes next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday, September 14th. They will be at Royal Oaks at 2 p.m. and Kiwani Care at 4 p.m., or excuse me, 3 p.m. And all of you are invited to come and attend and, and have worship with the residents there. Hey, mark your calendars also that uh, charge, annual charge conference will be Thursday, October 16th. That's a very important meeting. And so we hope that you will be there at 6.30 p.m. All members of the church council are voting members of the charge conference. And all members of the church are invited to attend. And it will be held right here as well. The UMW will be having a luncheon. That's the United Methodist Women, for those of you not aware. They'll be having a luncheon and program on Thursday, September 11th. The board will meet at 11.15. And then the rest of the members will meet at 11.45 for our lunch, and I'm sure they've got something really yummy cooked up. Um, the donation is $3, and the program will be presented by employees of the Henry Stark County Health Department, and it will be entitled The Many Faces of Home Care. And uh, Pat mentions in here that do you have, a, or whoever put this in, I, I apologize, do you have a favorite apron? Wouldn't it be fun to bring it to the UMW meeting and tell why it's your favorite? We're here to serve, aren't we? And so if you have an apron at home and you're a UMW member, bring your apron that day and talk about it. We can share good stories with each other. The UMW District Annual Celebration is September 15th in Peoria at Peoria First United Methodist Church, and it will be at 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., and that's a Monday. So reservations are being made by Joy, so contact Joy Bays if you would like to attend to that. And the crop walk will be coming up real soon. I believe it's October 5th, right, Lois? Lois Cecil is our coordinator for that, and she's always uh, eager to take your money. So if you'd like to donate to the crop walk, what a wonderful cause it is, please do so. You can see Lois, and she also will be uh, forming teams to walk in that crop walk. Even though it's not in the bulletin, health and wellness team will be also be meeting Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. So if you're on the health and wellness, mark your calendar for that. Melody Bankers are also in need of bell ringers. John Sayers is looking for anyone who would like to do the bells. We're really in need of bell ringers. They are in need of three of them, he says. So please see John if you would like to play. And if you're not sure if you'd like to or not, I invite you to go home and pray about it and see what God thinks because we really need Melody Makers. They're a wonderful, wonderful group, and we would like to see them continue in our church. And speaking of Melody Makers, choir is cool. 
I told you this last week, but I wanted to remind you again that the Kiwani Kids Community Choir rehearses every Thursday, and it starts started last Thursday, September 4th, but it's not too late. If you have children that would like to join, they can still come. They meet at 6 to 7 p.m. at the First Christian Church at 105 Dwight Street here in Kiwani. So please, uh, if you have children interested in that, please take them over there so that they can partake. I'd like to thank everyone for the wonderful turnout we had last week for Puppets for Jesus. They were absolutely thrilled to be here, and we think that they did a wonderful job, despite the technical difficulties, <laughs> which will always seem to happen no matter what you're doing. <laughs> but thankfully, um, it all worked out, and we had a wonderful show, and we just want to thank you for your generous, generous donation. They were absolutely speechless when they got home, and they opened their packet, it just makes me cry how wonderful our congregation is. <laughs> Praise you, all of you. I'm a crybaby, what can I say? <laughs> and last but not least, one thing I want you to mark your calendars for. Our outreach team has just been on fire for this, and I will give you more information later. But mark your calendars for October 4th, we will be having a free uh, Wani Theater showing of God's Not Dead. And we're hoping to reach the youth of our community and the adults of our community that would like to come as well. Families, everyone's invited. That will be October 4th. It will be at 1 p.m. And we hope that you will all come because it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. Thank you and God bless. In the book of Habakkuk, some people say Habakkuk, it says, the, earth, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. As we prepare our hearts and our spirits for worship, let us be in time a silent meditation. Please turn in your bulletin to the call to worship as we read responsively. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let us praise God's name with dancing, making melody to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let us exalt in glory. Let us sing for joy on our couches. Let the high praises of God be in our throats. Praise the Lord. Our hymn of celebration this morning is number 62. All creatures of our God and King will be singing verses 2, 4, and 6. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. When air clouds and rain
Please turn once again in your bulletin to the opening prayer. Let us pray together. Holy and merciful God, you are the author and finisher of faith. You are strength for the weak and rest for the weary. You are Savior for the sinful and home for the wanderer. You are healing for the sick and comfort for the sorrowful. You are our refuge and fortress. In this hour of worship, increase our faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please take a few moments to greet those around you today. As you're being seated, please turn to hymn number 549, where charity and love prevail. Where charity and love prevail, their God is ever found. Brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, true charity we learn. Let us in heart and mind and strength now love Christ in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be Now time for the children to come forward today for the children's worth, and we'll sing uh, verses 1 and 2 of 191. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, 
as he loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning. How you doing? Are you all asleep? There it is. My name is Rodney Winter. I'm a lay servant here at the church. I didn't bring my blue tarp today because it was way too hot last time. So we're not going to get under a tarp. It reads in Romans 8, verse 26 and 27, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know that we ought to pray what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groans and words that cannot be expressed. And he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saint is in accordance with God's will. I know a lot of you pray, right? Because I know you pray, because when you come back into the chapel, we pray in there, right? And so you pray for certain things, and it's important, as it read in this passage here, to have the Spirit in our hearts. Because when we pray, God answers us in different ways. First of all, he can answer us if we pray with... Uh, Maybe sin on our heart, he'll say, are you talking to me? When we have unconfessed sin in, our, in us, God is not listening to us. It says in Psalm 66, 18, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So it's important to remember that we shouldn't have sin in our heart. And one way to avoid that is to have the Spirit live in our heart. And another way that God answers us, he says, no. And by the way, no. And did you hear me? It was no. Give examples. So some of those examples are, you know, I really wanted that nice car. Maybe I didn't get it because God didn't feel that I needed it. So there's things that we ask for sometimes that maybe God doesn't feel that we need it. And then also he gives us examples of, yes, he answers us yes when we ask for prayers. Okay? We've all asked for prayers and we've gotten those answers. I have in my life and I think you can talk to many people here that have gotten those answers and then the last way he talks to us or answers those prayers is he tells us to wait I recently had one of those experiences about 10 days ago and I really needed his help to intervene and he made me wait about a day and a half and then he took care of the issue so those are the things that God can do so I think it's important for you when you go home today sit down with mom and dad spend a little bit a little bit talking about prayer and then ask God to intervene and send his spirit to live in your hearts and mom and dad's. Does that make sense? And by the way, those of you that are parents, they always act as well in the chapel. So they sit calm and quiet. So. All right, so let's bow our heads. Pray to God. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We beg of you to send your spirit amongst us to live in the hearts of these wonderful saints that sit in front of your sanctuary. And also to live in our hearts. So we can approach you, Father, without sin, to ask you for the needs that we see and the needs of the world. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join in the third verse. Ed has candy. Or we have candy over here. Go ahead and get some. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me. Please turn in your blue insert in your bulletin and follow along. Sure. Um, could I please have the children 
that I call and their parents come down, please. Um, we're having third graders receive their Bibles today. So Kennedy Anderson. Bring your blue papers with you. Yes, please bring your blue pa paper. Jordan Coffey Jacoby, Kevin Copeland, Jared Gould, Nathan Oliver, and Kate Salisbury. Who's over there? I'm going to have everybody find their name on the Bible in front. Your alphabetical order, so it should be pretty good. Jared, Jared, right here, buddy. Jared's here. And come right up here, buddy. Okay. Yep. All right. Kevin, right Jordan, under here, buddy. Bill, Bill and Ed. They're Jordan's over here on the here. side. Go around to the front, bud. Kevin, you're over here. Okay. And then we got is that Kennedy. Today's an exciting day for me and for all my Sunday school teachers. So I'd like to bring my Sunday school teachers for this year down. Um, for nursery, Corrine Jurgensen, Kelly Murphy, and Heidi Shimon. Pre-K, Patricia Dameron and Annette DeVochner. Kindergarten, Julia Wilson. First and second grade, Kelly Murphy and Lori Oliver. Third and fourth grade, Leanna Williams and Diana Esser. Fifth and sixth grade, Corrine Jurgensen and Amanda DeVochner, and junior high and high school, Jay DeVochner and Cheryl Inley. And please make sure you have your little blue paper. <laughs> okay. And we not only um, need people in the uh, Melody Makers Bell Choir, but we're also always looking for Sunday school teachers, so I hope you'll go home and pray about that as well uh, today as well. Oh yeah, we forgot to bring the adult teachers down. Adult Sunday school teachers are Loyalty Class Roberta Brown, Seekers Class Ralph Sintney, Spirit Class Judy Johnson, Wisdom Makers Paul Copeland, and we have a new young adult class that has not... Um, met yet, and that's Amanda DeVochner. All of you are supposed to be coming up. <laughs> if we called your name, you're supposed to be coming up. If you're here. I well, it'd be kind here. of hard to come up if you're not here. <laughs> that's right. There's Corrine. You can give me a bad time all the time. Right. I'm going to get him for that. Dear friends, let us recognize those who have responded to the call of God to become workers in the Sunday school. To teach, to administer the work of teaching, and to support the work of teaching are ministries of Christ among us. Those called to these ministries need our loyal support and prayers. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the blessings you so graciously bestow upon us. As we think back about our own childhood, we... Remember fondly those who taught us in Sunday school. And it wasn't so much the content that we learned, but the relationships that were built in the midst of that. And so I thank you, God, for each of these persons who have uh, heard your call and responded to be Sunday school teachers and leaders. Pour out your blessings upon them in this Sunday school year. Use them to share the love of Jesus. Use them to disciple and to mentor these young men and women under their care. Be with each of the Sunday school classes, be with each of the teachers, be with each of the students, that each of us might grow and deepen our relationship with Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Teachers and leaders, you have recognized God's call in your lives. Will you endeavor to develop your gifts of teaching so as to continue to pass on the Christian faith? Will you be loyal to the task, taking seriously the commitments of time and talent? And will you take seriously your role as learner, studying diligently the scriptures and traditions of the faith?
Congregation, please respond. We pledge ourselves to pray, pray for, you for you and for the, and for the educational, educational ministry of this congregation. We pledge ourselves to enable, encourage, and love you in this, in this ministry. We pledge ourselves to be learners with you, diligently studying with you in the scriptures and traditions of the faith. Okay, I'm going to introduce um, our third graders and present them their Bible. We have Kennedy Anderson. Jordan Coffey Jacoby. Good job, bud. Kevin Copeland. Oh, you got carry two back, bud. Good luck with that. <laughs> Jared Gould. There you go, buddy. Nathan Oliver. You guys want to stick around for a moment. And Kate Salisbury. Congratulations to all, th all of you. Parents and teachers. Parents and teachers, please join me in the reading. Receive the word of God, learn its stories, and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another, for we are the people of God. Third graders, you'll respond now. We receive these Bibles with our hands, our hearts, and our minds. Thank you. We will read and study the Bible together. Congregation, we, we rejoice, rejoice in this in step and your journey, journey with, God. with God. We pray, we pray God, God will guide, guide you, your, your family, family, and us as, as you use this holy Bible, Bible in, your home, in your home, in your Sunday, Sunday school classes, classes and, and in our worship. worship. We, we will, will learn, learn together and grow in our love for, for God's, God's word. word. Third graders. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks be to God. Okay, thank you very much. And I, you guys can go ahead and sit down, but I do have a couple kids that I need to bring forward. Um, if Kevin. I could, Kevin. could I please have Jerry, Nathan Jerry, Oliver, Jerry. Congratulations. Gabe Johnson, Congratulations. Jillian Jurgensen. Congratulations. Corinne, if you want to stay up for just a second. Okay. Okay. Amber Hepner, and then um, that's good. So we'll have to present her another day. Well, let's just go ahead and bring her up. Kyra, would you like to come forward, please? Towards the end of the Sunday school year, um, we did a program called Pray, and we asked the teachers to help us with this program. And we had a few kids that um, finished, and we would like to present them with um, a nice medal. There's four stages in different age groups. Um, Nathan, uh, um, Nathan Oliver received the God in Me, which is first through third grade. So let me switch hands here, buddy. Yep. Congratulations. Jillian Jurgensen, Gabe, and Kyra, and Amber all finished um, the program for fourth through fifth, sixth, there we go, and that was God and Family. So, congratulations. Congratulations, Gabe. Congratulations, Gabe. Thank you guys for working very hard, and thank you for the teachers that worked with them. You can go back to your seats. Thank you.
Choir, it's great to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your summer off. <laughs> and Sunday school teachers and Sunday school students, it's great to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your summer off, because now we've got to get back down to work. <laughs> Several of you will remember that uh, a few weeks ago I started a series of sermons on the basic Christian beliefs and started out with God and Genesis and creation and then we kind of moved ahead to Jesus and then I started doing a series kind of talk about what does it mean to uh, be a follower of Jesus and to grow in that faith. And I told you at the time that I didn't really know how long that series was going to start was going to be and I still don't know for sure uh, I kind of ran out of topics in that and so I decided to revert back to using the lectionary and so today's lecture today's texts are from the lectionary and uh, but they also tend to continue that theme of what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ now, last Sunday, we started the season of Kingdom Tide. Now, Kingdom Tide is an old term that is not really currently used in the larger church, but I still like it. And one of the themes of Kingdom Tide is growth. Our growth as individual Christians and growth of the kingdom of God, which is a mysterious thing if we look at some of the parables in the Gospels. But we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 13 this morning, beginning with verse 8 and reading through verse 14. Romans 13, verse 8. Paul writes, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one rule, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This past Friday, we drove to Dixon to see our two young grandsons play soccer. And when we got up on Interstate 80, Diane and I started a, a fairly lengthy conversation and we got pretty well engrossed in that conversation and as I'm tooling down I-80, all of a sudden I realize I have no idea where I am in relationship to the Princeton exit. I can only hope that I have not yet passed it. You've done that before, haven't you? How often have you driven to Peoria from here and you get into Peoria and all of a sudden you realize you don't remember going through West Jersey? You don't remember going through Laura. You don't remember getting on the interstate. You've been on cruise control. And it's just a fog. Well, you know, this is my, one of my fears when I'm coming back from Peoria is that I miss the 78 exit. And got to drive all the way to Galesburg to get back. I've done that once. <laughs> I hope I never have to do it again. Get busy thinking about something else and all of a sudden, whoop, there, there it was. And you're kind of stuck in no man's land, no place to turn around. You just got to keep going. Well, we do that spiritually at times, don't we? That's, that's what Paul seems to be talking about here in uh, Romans. 
He seems to be saying you're living your life on cruise control. Your spiritual life is on cruise control. And Paul says now, wake up! Wake up! Get yourself out of that spiritual lethargy. Get yourself out of that spiritual malaise. Get yourself out of that trance that you're in. Going through life and all of a sudden you realize you have no idea where you have been in life. You have no idea where your spirit has been. You just kind of, all of a sudden you realize, gosh, my life has just kind of been on cruise control and I don't know all the things that I missed out on. The other morning, Friday morning, you know the bulletin gets printed on Fridays, don't you? Friday morning, a couple of ladies come in, print the bulletin for us, fold them. That means when I go home on Thursday, whenever I go make it home on Thursday, either afternoon, evening, whenever it is, I'm supposed to have all my stuff in the bulletin that needs to be in there. So Friday morning, about 3 o'clock, one of my kids comes in and has to use the restroom. So I get up and I take her to the restroom and I come back to bed and... And I'm laying there and I can't get back to sleep. And about four o'clock, I realize, Paul, you forgot to put in your announcements in the bulletin. So I get up, I come up to the church at 4.15, I do my little thing. I go back home and I try to get back to sleep at five o'clock in the morning. But that seems to be what Paul is talking about. All of a sudden we wake up and we realize there's a whole lot of life that we seem to have missed out on. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. And he also talks about what it doesn't mean to wake up. Well, he talks about um, putting on the daytime. Dakota, our now 19-year-old son, he had a birthday Friday. He works as a Kiwani Auxiliary Police Officer. And generally at least once a week, sometimes more often, depending on what his work schedule is like and how much he's home now, he, go, he does a police ride-along. And he almost always does that at night. And one of the reasons he does it at night is because in Kiwani, there's not much police action during the day. If you want excitement, you've got to be there at night. Because that's when things are happening. Now, you'll be glad to know that according to Dakota, not a whole lot happens in Kiwani on Sunday night. He's gone out a couple of Sunday nights, and two or three hours later, he's home because there's nothing going on. But Paul seems to be saying, walk in the daytime because at night, bad things can happen. Bad things can happen in the world. Bad things can happen in your life. When you're walking, not in the daytime, but in the darkness in your life spiritually. And then Paul goes on to say, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're tooling up to Dixon the other evening, and we start running into rain. And it rained pretty hard there for a while. When we got to Dixon, it was still sprinkling. Got to the... Uh, soccer fields and it was still sprinkling a little bit and the temperature had gotten a little bit cool and all of a sudden we realize we're in shorts, our kids are in shorts, we're in short sleeve shirts, our kids are in short sleeve shirts, we didn't bring any rain gear. Diane says, I think I'm going to take the kids and go to Kendra's house, our daughter's house. You going to go to the game? I said, yeah, I'll go to the game. So I grab a blanket out of the back of the van. We do carry blankets with us because our kids get cold with the air conditioning on. I grab a blanket, and it's only about yay long, only about that wide. And I take it out to the field, and it's sprinkling, not real hard, but it's still sprinkling a little bit. And so I take that blanket, and I kind of wrap it around me. And uh, the blanket's getting a little wet from the mist that we're having. After a while, it quit raining. So I thought, well, I think I can take the blanket off, lay it down. So I take the blanket off, fold it up, lay it down on the ground. Well, I actually laid it on top of my son-in-law's blanket so it wouldn't be touching the ground. 
about three minutes go by and I'm thinking, you know, it's kind of chilly. I grab the blanket again, wrap it around me. That blanket, not very big, but it's enough to keep the mist off me. It's enough to hold in my body heat. And that's what Paul says. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Wrap Jesus around your life. And let Jesus envelop your life. And let Jesus warm your life and keep you safe. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ as you put on a garment. And let him envelop you. Now Paul's a practical kind of a guy. For 11 chapters of, of, of Romans, he's been talking about his theology. And when he gets to the 12th chapter, he starts talking practicalities. And he continues those practicalities in chapter 13. And in the previous paragraph to all this one about waking up and walking in the light and putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, he says one of the practical applications of all of that is that you love one another. You may remember that two or three or four weeks ago, the whole sermon revolved around the idea of love. In every one of the Gospels, Jesus, in one way or another, says to the people, you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. In John, he told, he told them, people will know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And that's a theme throughout the whole New Testament writings. In Paul's writings, especially in the first letter of John, he says, if you don't love your brother, you don't love God. Because you can't love, you cannot, you can't not not love your brother and still love God. Loving God means you're called to love your brother and your sister and your neighbor. And Jesus said, even your enemy. So one practical application of this putting Jesus on means that we love one another. Now, the assigned gospel lesson for today is out of the 18th chapter of Matthew, verses 15 to 20, in which Jesus says, If your brother or sister sins against you, go to him or her and tell them about the matter and seek to be reconciled with one another. And then he says, If that doesn't work, go find two or three other believers with you and take those two or three other believers with you and go to that person and try to fix up the problem. And if that still doesn't work, well, get a few more believer, other believers and seek to be reconciled. But first of all, Jesus says, if somebody sins against you, you are to go to them and you are to seek to be reconciled with that person. Now, that's not what our culture says. Our culture tells us, well, if somebody has sinned against you, you, have, you just wait until they come and apologize to you. They're supposed to come and say you're, they're sorry before you do anything. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said the demand of love is that if somebody sins against you, you go to them and seek to settle the matter and to be reconciled in that relationship. Two practical applications of what does it mean to put on the Lord Jesus? You love and you seek reconciliation in the midst of hurt. The uh, Old Testament assigned lection for today is from Exodus, where um, God gives instructions about the Passover. The Passover celebration became the highest, holiest feast of the Israelite nation. And it was a reminder to them that God had brought them out of the land of Egypt as slaves and led them through the wilderness for 40 years and brought them into the land of Canaan and allowed them to live as a free nation rather than be enslaved and in bondage to the Egyptians. It was for the Israelites their defining moment in their history. You and I have a defining moment in our history as well. And that's the cross of Calvary. In the cross of Calvary, God showed us the depth of his love, the depths of his care, the depths of his forgiveness and mercy in our lives. And we declare that once again today as we receive the sacrament. 
But as we declare that special, significant moment in our lives, we are also reminded that as God loved us in Jesus Christ, we are called to love one another. And we're called to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in the fullness of his life. I read this article the other day in uh, Leadership Journal, and I cannot pronounce the last name of the author. His first name is Tulian. He's pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And uh, he's talking about what does it mean for us to be Christians? What does it mean for the gospel to be proclaimed to our lives? And he says... It means we don't have to transform the world in order to have our lives matter. We don't have to build a big church to secure our own worth. We don't have to be successful to justify our existence. Because Jesus was strong for you, you're free to be weak. Because Jesus was someone, you're free to be no one. Because Jesus was extraordinary, you're free to be ordinary. Because Jesus succeeded for you, you're free to fail. Because Jesus won for you, you're free to lose. We're free to live as the people of Jesus. To live in the light. To wake up from our spiritual lethargy. To put on Jesus Christ. And to love and to forgive as we have been loved. As we have been forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and everlasting God, centuries ago, you led your people, the Israelites, out of Egypt through the wilderness and into the promised land. You established them as a nation, your nation, your people. You establish them in your mercy, you establish them in your grace, you establish them in your love, you establish them in your might and in your power. Whenever they strayed from you, you sought to bring them back unto yourself. Time and time and time again, you sent prophets, you sent others wooing them back unto yourself in the midst of their sin and in the midst of their unfaithfulness. And in the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the supreme example of your love, of your mercy, of your care, of your kindness, of your willingness to give of your very self in order to bring us back unto yourself. All praise and honor and glory and wisdom and majesty and power belong unto you, O God, and to you alone. And we give you thanks and magnify your holy name for the great salvation that is ours in Christ Jesus the Lord. We are reminded again this day, God, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, And he gave it to his disciples saying, eat, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he blessed it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and juice, O God. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And that as we receive this sacrament, may we make a renewed commitment in our lives to wake up 
from the spiritual lethargy to wake up from being on cruise control spiritually that we will make a deeper commitment to walk not in the darkness but to walk in your light the light of Jesus that we will make a deeper commitment that we are going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to clothe our entire being that we will make a deeper commitment, God, that as we have been loved, as we have been forgiven, we will love and we will forgive others. Again, O God, as we receive this sacrament, as we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, then send us out into the world that we may be the body of Christ, his feet and his hands in our darkened world. These things we ask in his precious name. Amen. Would my assistants please come forward? This morning we're doing communion a little bit different than what we normally do. Uh, You'll take a piece of bread, go ahead and eat the piece of bread, and then you'll take a cup of juice and drink the juice. And please leave your cups in the altar rail uh, holders uh, after you've received communion.
Let us pray. God, as we have come into this place to praise you and to give you thanksgiving, as we have heard your word spoken, as we have enjoyed this meal together, the Lord's Supper, the sacrament, again we give you thanks and praise your holy name. But we are also mindful of those who have special needs this day. All of those people that are listed on our prayer concern list, people that we name before you only in our hearts and in our minds, and the countless other needs within our families, within our congregation, within our community, and throughout our world. God, you know the heartache, you know the pain, you know that uh, strife and war and unrest, injustice and poverty, broken relationships, and just a myriad of problems that we lift up before you, O oh God. You know them better than we know them. And we trust in your love, we trust in your care, we trust in your intervention. We trust in your reconciling spirit. And ask, O oh God, that you would bring healing and wholeness to our lives, to our world. Use us again, O oh God, we pray, as the instruments of your love, as the vessels of your grace, that as we have been touched by Jesus, help us to go out and touch others with Jesus. We ask these things in his precious name, even as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn ascending is number 536, Precious Name. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. <coughs> Take the name of Jesus with you.
Indeed, may you take the name of Jesus with you this day and every day. Go out in the fullness of his joy. Go out in the fullness of his peace. Amen.